in this module we will discuss transport through one dimensional systems we will discuss the transport mechanism by taking quantum point contact as a candidate device then we will discuss conductance quantization we will move on to another similar device called atomic point contacts and we will also discuss the applications of these devices ok so these quantum point contacts are one dimensional ballistic constrictions what you have here is a thin constriction where the transport is one dimensional usually these devices are realized on a two dimensional system on a two dimensional platform so you have the three dimensional system then you go to the one dimensional by various technologies that we have discussed such as semiconductor heterostructure or two dimensional layered materials or whatever you have you remove one dimension from 3D you go two dimension now the next step is you remove one more dimension then you will get a one dimensional system ok so you start with a two dimensional semiconductor heterostructure which we have discussed in one of the previous lecture then you realize a thin one dimensional channel in the middle by the technique electrostatic gating that also we have discussed in detail so you have a semiconductor structure it could be gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide based or silicon silicon and silicon silicon germanium based or you can also have a two dimensional electron system based on the layered material such as graphene or another, any other van der Waals semiconductor so your starting point is a two dimensional system what that means is the transport in the vertical direction we have I have assumed is, is the direction is forbidden or it's a perfect two dimensional system now before you apply these gate voltages the transport happens freely in the xy plane it is a free electron gas free electron quantum gas in the xy plane ok now once you apply voltages to this surface case you are going to realize a thin channel electrostatically the technique which we have discussed in the great detail in one of the previous lecture so the x direction that is along this constriction the electrons can still move but in along the y direction there is a confinement which is nearly parabolic may not be a perfect parabola but you can approximate it to a parabola which is pretty close to the practical situations as you see the data in the coming slides ok so you have y direction a parabolic confinement that means quantizing energies now x direction is free to move is a direction it cannot move ok now the illustration here shows roughly how the potential energy landscape is going to look once you have all this voltage is turned on the energy of the electron is given by the energy in the y direction that is the quantized energy of a parabolic well then the free particle energy along the x direction so what you have is 
this is the energy along the y direction and this is the energy along the energy because of the motion along the x direction this is energy due to the confinement in the y direction and this is the total energy okay now what you have is you have a series of one dimensional sub bands or, or modes in the channel with roughly spaced in energy approximately 1 milli, 1 milli electron volt apart but these all depend on various parameters okay how close the gates are what is the carrier concentration all okay, there are finer details to it but you can think it's something like a milli electron volt and we probe the system close to the Fermi level we are, we are always sitting in the linear transport regime where your charge carriers are moving on the Fermi surface or very close to Fermi surface within the temperature broadening so what you have is you have um, the modes along the y direction because of the confinement if I draw it here so you have this confinement because of the voltage on the gate then the electron wave functional form modes in the constriction this is the first mode then you can have second mode and so on okay so the number of modes roughly is given by 2 w divided by lambda f where lambda f is the fermi wavelength or the Broglie wavelength of the electron so so you will have this many number of modes in the construction with a given width okay to start with but now you can change the width by applying the volt by by varying the voltage on these gates so if you when you increase the negative volt negative whatever when you reduce the voltage make it more negative then the electric field will creep more into the channel and will and even the eventually it will close the channel also so that is the effect that we are going to look so the width of the channel we can control and this now what that means is the number of modes also you can control which is available near the Fermi level because you have to understand that the transport always happening at the Fermi level so at Fermi level how many modes are there okay then your transport or conduction will depend on that and the energy scales here are the temperature broadening and the subband spacing so the subband spacing is of the order of milli electron volt what that means is to observe this effect you need low temperature okay it's not just the subband spacing it's also the system also need to be in the ballistic transport regime where the electron doesn't undergo any collision what that means the mean free path of the electron should be much much larger than the dimension or the length of the channel and the width of the channel or width of the or width and length of the construction so if you factor in all these and also the one dimensional also the and also the subband also the subband spacing of the heterostructure or the interface or the two dimensional tool system the what you can understand is the uh, understand is what you need is a low temperature environment to carry out these experiments or to observe this effect okay so this is a cryogenic transport experiment whatever you are going to do okay all right now let's look at the energy 
levels along the construction okay so what you have is a constriction not just a constriction you also have a saddle point in the middle of the constriction so this is the x direction that's the direction the electrons are going to move through the constriction that is this direction here x direction because of the electric field the bottom of the well is not as low as the energy of the two dimensional electron system which is further so you have a small bump as the electron pass through the constriction that bump is created by the voltages on the gate okay so as the electron moves along the x direction this is what the energy is going to look like okay this is how the energy levels are going to change and this splitting that is shown here this splitting are available only at the constriction far away from the constriction you have a two dimensional system and all those all these levels will actually collapse onto the two dimensional whatever the energy of the two dimensional electron system so as it approaches the constriction is going to start feeling the confinement effect of the d to the gate along the y direction then suddenly this will split into the one dimensional sub bands whose energy is given in the previous slide so you have a par parabolic confinement as shown at the constriction not only that you also have a saddle shape potential okay and uh, this is along the y direction so now let's look at the transport through the system as a function of the gate voltage that is one of the main control or knob that we have okay so as you vary the gate voltage as you make the gate voltage more and more negative you are going to increase the energy of the electron at the constriction and you are also going to make the constriction more tighter so you have two effects number one you will change the base of this parabola because the negative voltage will increase the overall energy of the parabola or energy of all the levels number one number two it also makes the parabola more tighter or more sharper more acute so when you push the parabola up you will push the levels gradually up with respect to the fermi energy that is shown here so the number of levels or the sub bands in the channel in the in the channel available for transport depends on the gate voltage so if you increase the gate voltage so if you when i when i say increase if you when the, when you make the gate voltage negative you will push the parabola up and the levels will escape one by one so you will have fewer and fewer levels for or channels for transport that is one effect second effect is when you make when you increase when you when you reduce the gate voltage when you make the parabola more tighter acute then the sub band spacing also will increase that also will cause the energy levels to go further apart that also will add to the dc shift the parabola is going to feel there are two effects but both effects will cause the energy levels to go beyond the fermi energy beyond which it cannot carry any electron that level okay that state is not available for transport so when you vary the 
gate voltage you will sweep these levels across the fermi level and one by one so that you will have lower and lower number of channels available for transport and the number of channels available for transport will reduce you know in an integer fashion and that's going to cause a step like behavior in conductance in the reduction of conductance so if i plot the gate voltage as a function of so if i plot the conductance as a function of the gate voltage if it is a usual field effect device like a uh, fet then you are going to see a smooth reduction of conductance if it is the usual field effect device right but in this case what you have you also have a small gap that gap is going to create a channel and the electron energy is conduct in the channel so when you see the gate voltage you will basically change the number of levels available for transport in a step like manner and you will see that in the change in the conductance or current also and from the landover for malism which we will discuss in very detail in one of the next class but now you have to take this take it for take it um for my word you have to take my word for it okay so the landover for malism is telling you that the transport in one dimension is the the conductance in one dimension is given by e square by h that is the conductance quantum okay quantized conductance into the number of channels when i say n here what that means a number of channel one number of reflectionless channel that means there is no reflection or backscattering in that channel okay and we have also defined that this device performs in the um in the ballistic transport regime what that means is the dimension of this constriction is far small compared to much much smaller than the mean free path so you don't need to worry about any reflection inside the or reflection scattering inside the channel okay so as per landor formalism what we have is the conduction should go in step like manner with the number of channels and as you vary the gate voltage you are reducing the number of channels and you are reducing the conduction step like manner and you can see from this plot or any of these plots here that it is going to be like the conduction is going to vary in a step like manner and in units of e square by h that's what you are seeing and these two are one of the two of the first experiment both happened in the same time period 1988 these are the two first first two papers where they have observed the conduct conductance the first reports of this quantum point conduct okay here one thing which you need to be aware of is the conductance is varying not in e square by h but 2 e square by h okay it is 1 2 3 4 and so on okay it's going to vary in 2 e square by h conductance okay but that again depends on whether you have spin degeneracy or not in the absence of any applied magnetic field you have both spin up and down going through a channel so every quantized channel correspond to two spin channels so e, this n will be 2n or you can say 2e square by h instead of e square by h step that is what you are seeing here but if you apply magnetic field then 
what you are going to have is you will see the effect of spin. Because spin is another channel. Okay. So as shown here, you have zero field, you have it is quantized in 2, 2e square by h. The moment you vary the field and the high field, you can see that each of these is going to split into two. So you have e square by h steps. But in the absence of the field, you have 2e square by h step. Okay. And any other degeneracy is going to provide additional channels such as value. This is from a graphene, bilayer graphene quantum point contact, where you have a thin sheet, one two layers of carbon atoms, okay, BLG, bilayer graphene, which is sandwiched between two insulating two-dimensional system, that is HPN, hexagonal boron nitride. And the details you can how make to make this device and other details of the measurement you can find in this paper. But the take home message here is here you can see that these are four e square wedge steps because there are four channels for the system. Every quantum channel correspond to has a is four fold degenerate. Okay. What that means you have four e square wedge. And you can see the moment you apply a magnetic field, you lift all this degeneracy and it's going to be eventually E square of H. You can, you can see that it's split into E square of H. Each of this plateau is split into four individual, individual plateaus when you take the field from 0 Tesla to 5 Tesla. Okay. So every channel, when I say channel, every reflectionless one dimensional channel, every ballistic one dim reflectionless channel okay, is giving you E square by H for conduction. That is the resistance of the channel. And that is given by Landauer formalism, which we will discuss in detail. Okay. So that is the take home message from these two slides. So if it is if it, if you have spin, then you will have degeneracy 2, then if you have valley, then you multiply spin and valley. Then you have you have that many states. In this case, it is fourfold. You have two spin, two valley. Okay, that's what the story so far. Okay. Now there is the famous, very famous work by a group in Harvard from headed by Bob Westerfeld and which is published in uh, in this article here where they have imaged the coherent flow of electrons through this constriction. So what they have done is they have a two-dimensional electron system a cartoon of the setup is here and you have a, a gate which scans over the sample is a moving gate, which is a AFM tip, which you, which you can bias and you can use as a gate, but it also moves across the sample. Okay. So additional, in addition to these two gates, you have one more gate, but you don't apply a lot of voltage on this gate. That is not the idea. The idea here is you have this one dimensional channel which looks like a coherent flow of electron uh, to flow of electrons through the channel and you want to sense it are there modes because the theory says there are modes can be visualize it can be see those modes okay so what they have done is they measured the transport through this device and without this tape they just got this step-like behavior. Now what they did is, they part on these plateaus, for example, first plateau, second and third and so on. And the first plateau should have only one mode going through it. So when they scan the tip over the sample, okay, whenever the tip is on top of one of these modes, then 
because of the field of the wheel due to trip, the, tra tip, the transport to the channel will get affected and that they somehow decode and plot it. So what you can see here is whenever the tip is far away from the center, you don't have any change. What they have plotted here is a delta G, the change with and with respect to tip. Okay, Whether you have tip there or you don't have tip there, it's a change in the current closed system. Now we can see that whenever the tip is far away, if it's if you have a single mode, that should be going propagating close to center. Okay. So when you're far away from the center of the constriction, you don't have any effect. But when you reach near the constriction, okay, I can assume I can just extra interpolate these channels here, okay, then you have effect. You can see that delta G here is actually substantial. Delta G product here is the change in the current. Because the current, the tip is going to dent the wave function, or you actually can actually poke on it, and that is going to have an effect on the transport through system. Okay. You can simply think that it's going to cause affect the ballistic transport because it's going to have a is going to provide a scattering center for the electron. But when it is too far from the center, the electrons are really not going there, so they are going through the center in the first plateau. Now, when you go to the second plateau, they actually have seen two modes. That's what they have. You can see two modes. And when you go to the third plateau, you can see three modes. Okay, you can see three also. So this is such a beautiful experiment where you can directly visualize this quantization and these modes of the electron going through this constriction just by scanning the tip over it and measuring the current. Okay, but it's a very interesting and also involved experiment, but it's very easy to understand. So what we are seeing here is the the plateau this um, quantum point contact is acting like a waveguide, similar to a waveguide for electromagnetic waves for electrons. So electrons going through this constriction will have its wave nature, but because of the boundary condition created by the gate, because of the boundary, the wave function should go to zero. Okay, it's going to propagate through the constriction like the waves, electromagnetic wave, electromagnetic waves going through a wave gate. So you can think that quantum point contact is like a wave gate, similar is similar to a wave gate for electromagnetic waves for electrons. Okay. Now, this quantization is not just a phenomenon which is restricted to these two dimensional electron systems. You can see similar phenomena, similar effects in conduction, other constra constrained devices too. One of the most studied system is an atomic point contact. Okay, so what we have is an atomic point contact. Atomic point, atomic point contact, or people also call it APC. APC. Okay. So what you need is you need quantized number of modes through the through the conductor. That's all your condition. And every mode, which we assume is reflectionless, is going to contribute E square by H. That's all the physics says. It doesn't say, it doesn't talk about gates, it doesn't talk about two-dimensional electron system, nothing. You just need quantized modes. That's all it is. So, for metals, to observe these quantized modes, you need to have your Fermi wavelength, which is all size of the dimension of the conductor. The Fermi wavelength for semiconducting systems, such as the two-dimensional electron system, is pretty large because the Fermi wavelength 
is lambda f is basically goes up as in the carrier concentration goes down. This is n carrier concentration. Okay. Is 1 by n. This, this term here is. So for metals, the carrier concentration is very, very high. The lambda f is of the order of the interatomic distance or interatomic scale. So what that means is to observe this effect, you need to have the device dimension comparable to, lamb, comparable to lambda f or smaller, then only you can see the condensation, condensation effects. And for metals, what that means is this should be of the order of atomic, interatomic space spacing. So you cannot see this condensing, uh, condensation of transport in metals. In the, in the similar size scale as that of the semiconductor, you need to go to atom atom point contact, okay? Because your constriction should be like of the dimension of lattice constant, okay? So, the way that you do, we achieve this is taking a conductor and pulling it or bending it and to a point where the constriction is made up of like made up of made by contacting made by a contact between few atoms okay and eventually you break it then you basically you're done okay so you can pull a thinned conductor here for example you can take a it's shown here also you can take and unaware, then you etch it down and make a really neck shaped region in the middle. Then you pull it or bend it such that the last few moments you will have the contact is broken atom by atom. Okay. So when you do that, what you are going to see is a step like behavior in transport. So that's what is plotted here. You can see. The transport or current goes down, so conductance goes down in G0, G0 is again E square by H. But here it is plotted as a function of time, the time is based on time of bending or time of pulling. Similar behavior is observed in another system too. Okay. So these devices are called atomic point contacts, and here you can see this condensing effect even at room temperature. You don't need a really low temperature environment because the energy scales involved are pretty high in this case. Because you are talking about breaking or making connection between two atoms. Atom atom, atom connection is one channel, and you have two atoms connected is two channel, like and so on. Okay. So the action of you breaking or pulling this wire is breaking the connection between the two sides, atom by atom. Okay. And every one of those is going to give you a step in the transport. So that is the technology and physics of atomic point contact or in short APC. But this condensation effect is something universal in conductance. It is it doesn't care about whether it is a semiconductor or metal or anything. All it says is all it depends is on the number of modes available for transport and each mode is going to give you E square of H in conduction. Okay. Now, very interestingly, you can also see condensed transmission of light too. So there is a landmark experiment is published in this journal. What you have is you have a source of light. Of course, you have a diffuser which is going to make it uniform. Then you have something like a detector, which is in the form of a sphere here. And you have some arrangement to basically control the width of this opening through which the light is entering. This is like the electrons going through the constriction. The light is going into, the, into a region where you can measure the intensity, which is an integrating sphere through a collimator, which, whose width you can control okay, by a piezo. And 
what they have measured is again the transmission transmitted power which is collected here varies a step like manner as a function of slit width which is exactly what we were also saying for the case of quantum point contact or atomic point contact so this quantized behavior of transmission of light or transport of electrons basically depends only on the wave nature of electron and the quantization condition in the construction and this is the beauty symbol the beauty of the quantum behavior of electrons or photons okay in the next lecture what we will do is we will look into the details of the one dimensional transport and the landover formalism